Assalamu alaikum viewers. Today I will talk about 10 great books. And these 10 great books, most of these I read as a teenager because I've already made a video about the 10 books I read when I was a child. So these books are all in English, not necessarily of English origin, but these are all in English because they're either translations or directly written in English. So, all right. So the first book I will mention here is the Yi Jing. I was 16 and I entered my father's library and found this book called Maps of Consciousness. And this book had various occult sciences. And one occult science that it talked about was the Yi Jing. And I looked very hard and actually found the book in my father's library. So the Yi Jing, or the Book of Changes, as it is called, is an oracle. But it's not an oracle which tells you what's going to happen in the future. It's an oracle that tells you what you should do. So it tells you what the superior man does in your circumstances. You can use yellow stocks or coins to consult it. But these days you can just go on the internet, um, click a button or two, and it'll give you an answer. So I would strongly recommend you to check it out. It's called the Yi Ching, or the Book of Changes. The second book that I want to talk to you about is called Astrology for the Millions by Alan Leo. This book introduced me to astrology again around the age of 16. And I was fascinated by the kind of stuff Alan Leo was talking about. I ended up reading a whole bunch of books on astrology, developed the skills of reading a horoscope, making a horoscope at the time when there was hardly um, any computerized horoscopes available. I did the very, very complex math that was associated with it and uh, taught myself astrology. So one of the best things that happened to me as a teenager. The other book um, that I really, really loved reading was The Moon and Sixpence by William Somerset Maugham. Somerset Maugham was an English writer, a novelist, and also a short story writer. And my teacher, Nafis Siddiqui, was very, very inspiring in terms of English literature. By, before that time, I was a lot more into Urdu literature and pretty much have, had read all the classics of Urdu literature. But he motivated me to read English fiction as well. And uh, Somerset Mom was one of the names he recommended. So I started with The Moon and Sixpence. And um, uh, The Moon and Sixpence was actually uh, based on the life of uh, Paul Gauguin, who was um, a French painter. He was actually a stockbroker turned painter who left his wife and children to go to uh, uh, Pacific Islands and just painted paintings. Mm. The next book is The Lord of the Rings Trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm sure many of you have seen the movies. Tolkien had a great sense of imagination. In, but in fact, what he wrote about was what was happening around him. Around him was England was being denuded, English forests were being cut for the sake of industry and the industrial revolution that was taking place was lamenting, you know, the darkness of the industrialization that was actually robbing England of its natural treasure. So a great book, set of books to read if you haven't read it, brilliant. Then I encountered another Chinese ancient text called The Art of War. And this book, The Art of War, is by Sun Tzu, where he talks about military strategy. But the great thing about Sun Tzu's military strategy is that it links military with the economy. It links military with the psychology of the people and that of the soldiers. And to the extent that a lot of people, a lot of MBA programs, in fact, teach the art of war as part of business strategy. So I think uh, it's a great book to read. It's a very small book, but if you read it with a good commentary, I think it would be money well spent. Then the next 
set of books is the Harry Potter books. Um, I'm not embarrassed to say I read them when I was an adult. In fact, I wanted my children to read them. But I ended up reading them because uh, my search assistant at that time, Jenny Sterland, encouraged me to read it. She said, it's brilliant, you will love it. And she was right. I did end up reading it and loving it. It has the, you know, I, I believe that Harry, Ron and Hermione, the three main characters, are uh, an archetypal trinity manifested in this book in modern times. Um, the next book, or the set of books, is the Dark Materials Trilogy by Philip Pullman, the first of which is called The Golden Compass. And they also made a film based on uh, this trilogy. Uh, what I would um, like to say here again, I really, really loved the books. I did not like the ending though. Um, but I'm not going to tell you what the ending was because if you end up reading it, you will not enjoy it if you already know the ending. So no spoilers from me about this. The next book that had a very, very deep impact on me was History of Western Philosophy by Burton Russell. And yes, you know, it goes to ancient Greece and from ancient Greece it comes to modern philosophy. And in, you know, in the span of these two plus thousand years, Russell does uh, good justice to all of these different philosophers that, uh, you know, that needed mentioning. Uh, I would say that if you are not into that kind of dry stuff, even though I would strongly recommend this book, I would say read Sophie's World by Joe Stein Garder. And Joe Stein Garder has written um, what I would call a history of Western philosophy, but in the in fiction form. And it's really well written. So I would strongly recommend one of the two books, or both, if you're interested. Uh, number nine on my list is A Guide to Rational Living, or its newer version, A New Guide to Rational Living, by Dr. Albert Ellis, PhD. Uh, as you know, as you're familiar with my videos on anxiety and depression, a lot of it has been inspired by the work of Dr. Albert Ellis. And Dr. Albert Ellis uh, explains his philosophy and his psychotherapy and his self-help ideas uh, very well in this Guide to Rational Living. And last, but definitely not least, in fact, I saved it for last, was the book Muhammad by Martin Lings. Uh, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, um, is a book that Martin Lings wrote based on earliest sources. And so it is closest to the earliest sources about the life of the Holy Prophet. And Martin Lings has done... Uh, great justice to it. The book was also given awards by the government of Pakistan when it was first published. Its uh, local versions, uh, I mean local publishing has been done by Suhail Academy and it's very widely available. I would urge all of you to read this great book. Thank you very much. Khuda Hafiz.